There are two ways to grow your electrical contracting business. The first is organic growth. The second is acquisition growth. What's the difference? Well, organic growth is the traditional way, is the way where you hire. First, you start your own business. You get an apprentice. You train your apprentice. He grows. He becomes a help, more of a helper to a journeyman and so on. And then you get more customers. You get bigger. You get more vans. You get into more expenses. You get bigger. The second way is through acquisitions where customers will actually, or, or other electricians or companies will buy your business. Now, if you're being bought out, do you think the people who are buying you out are buying your men and your vans and your equipment? No, they're buying your customer base. That's the only thing that has intrinsic value other than your vans and your, your inventory. Your electricians and even you mean nothing unless you're going to stay along with the company. And a lot of companies that ask to buy my company want me to stay on for a period of time so that I, they don't, my customers don't skip a beat. Did I do that way? No. I'm keeping my, co my company as a legacy. I'm passing it on to my sons who are running the company today. So let's talk about bigger versus smaller and the trap that I feel electricians get themselves into. I remember reading an electrical contractor magazine about a guy who said, hey, I've got 15 vans and they're almost paid for. And that's all he had. So he had all this expense, all these guys, and his goal was just to have his van payments paid for. To me, I didn't agree with that because that's a depreciating item. Why would you want to invest the profits in your company just to get buy something that depreciates? Also, remember this. If a customer is just calling needing an electrician, that means you're not important, right? I don't want those kind of customers. I want customers that want me, Garrett Henderson. They want me on the job. They want to pay me the top rate because I'll get there and I'll get it done quick. I don't want customers that just want an electrician to show up because that means I'm competing with you. And a lot of you guys are so cheap that's why you're broke and you're not sitting here where I am on a Friday morning trying to teach you guys how to do your business. But I've been challenged and I'm going to do it, okay? So I'm going to keep making these videos to give you some advice. So smaller in the electrical contracting game is better because you want your customers to call you, not just an electrician. And if you're working for a developer, your rates are too cheap. Never work for a developer. That, leave that up to the unions. Leave that up, those big jobs. Leave that up to the guys that want to take that risk. Because the risk that I take, in other words, when I, when I take a job, customer calls me and I take a job. Let's say the job's $100,000 and it's $30,000 in material $30,000 in labor and $40,000 from my pocket, right? I'm taking that, sh that risk of that guy not paying me, right? So I really pick who my customers are. I don't just go to a developer. In fact, if a developer calls me or I get one of these cold calls, I'm sure you guys get because of the internet and you got these guys that are doing these fit outs. They do these chain uh, Chipotle's and McDonald's and all these chain places and they're reaching out because they're not from your state. Stay away from those guys. All right. Number one, you're taking a chance of not getting paid. And when you hire me, I'll pay all my debts no matter what. So if I go to my supply house and it costs me 30 grand and you don't pay me, well, guess what? I'm still paying the 30 grand and I'm going to pay that 30 grand within 10 days because I'm going to get a 2% discount from my supply house because that goes right into my profit and I'm going to pay my guys and their taxes. So I'm at risk for the whole 100,000 when I take on a job. So. I pick and choose who my customers are. Now, this is how my growth worked for me when you do it my way. When you stay small, very small, and you keep your expenses low, you work out of your closet, work out of your garage, work out of your van. Stay extremely small, have a great vehicle though, right? Be organized, right? 
And this is the best way to grow. In fact, this is how I win the lottery. You talk about juice, you talk about uh, serotonin flow. Here's how you want to get my serotonin flowing. When I get the phone call of the follow the leader, what is follow the leader, Garrett? Follow the leader is what all executives do. If you're an executive out there and you're not an electrician, you know what follow the leader is. That means you, dr you jump on the coattails of someone who's ahead of you. Either your boss or your superior, he calls you up and says, hey, I have an opportunity in Germany. I got an opportunity in California. And you pack up and you go and you follow that guy because he takes care of you and he's going to give you a lot of money. Well, that happens with us, okay? You can't tell me that you have a customer that's, and you treat them fantastically, okay? And then they get another job. The executive gets another job at another spot and they call you and say, hey, Gar." I'm now going to be with this company, XYZ. Are you interested in also doing electric work for them? What, are you kidding me? Of course I am. That's how you grow, in my opinion. Again, guys, this is just my opinion. This is telling you how I've done it. And if you want to listen to these other videos with these guys on the job site with their hard hats and their tool belts on, they don't show you where they live, they don't show you views like this, go ahead. But if you want to listen to someone who's been there and done it and is doing it, please follow me. I got a lot of these for you. Now, I notice a lot of you guys making these dumb comments, and that's okay. Because I'm just telling you the way I did it. Is there a right way to do it? No. Is there a wrong way to do it? No. Everybody's individual and everybody's differently. But again, the best news I can get, hitting the lottery for me, is when I get that phone call from an executive at a company that I work for, calls me and he's going on to another company. That is how you grow. And only then do you think about bringing on someone else. Because remember, this guy called you. He called you to come and work for him. He didn't call an electrician. He's not looking for an electrician. He's looking for accountability. He's looking for someone that is going to get the job done. He's not calling you because you're the cheapest. Right? He's not calling because you can show up tomorrow. He's calling because you make him look good. So when his boss says to him, hey, I need these computers wired. I need these access points. I need these cameras. I need a UPS system. I need a new service. Let's call Garrett from Henelect. Why? Because they know when I say yes, it's going to get done. I've got the resources behind me, I've got the supply houses behind me, I've got the manpower behind me. They know I'm going to do it. And that is when you grow. You don't grow just to say you've got, I got five guys and five vans. I've got ten guys and ten vans. Listen, the more guys, the more expense. And if you're non-union, you don't want to be a big company. Now, oh, I hear you. Okay, I here comes all the comments, just like the scrap wire comments. I get it. But the bigger you are, the harder you fall. And remember, if you're so big and you start to lose work, what happens? You lose sleep and profit because you can't keep your guys busy. All you're worried about is keeping your men busy. That's not the way to be an electrical contractor. Let the unions deal with that crap. If you want to be an employee, go work for the union. If you want to be rich and an entrepreneur, just listen to what I'm telling you. Again, electricians, there are two kinds. There are the leaders and the followers. You don't want guys that just want electricians. Hey, I need an electrician on the job. Well, you can call anybody. I want Garrett on my job. Is Garrett going to be here or is son going to be here? That's the customer that I want. Anyway, beautiful day here. Let me clarify up also about that scrap copper. What I was saying in that video was you should just make sure that you're not breaking your company rules. If your owner or the, whoever's in charge says, hey, you can take all the copper you want, go ahead. But not my company, okay? We keep it and we share it all together at a certain time. And last year, we had $109,000 of copper that we split amongst you guys. I didn't get any of it. We gave it all to the employees. And yes, we had a party. We had a great party. We stripped all the wire and we had a great party and we all went and celebrated with a nice bonus, man. Plus, I gave them two weeks pay. 
So before you judge me, look in the mirror.